Dobrý den, vinilová komunito. Doufám, že se vám vede dobře. So this was actually my first language. People sometimes think that I'm German, but actually I'm not. Um, I'm Czech. So uh, this is a quick one before he comes home. That's what she said. So um, I was just listening to some really great music yesterday and the day prior to that. And uh, so I thought I need to share the enthusiasm and um, show you some of the records. And uh, I was also pretty happy about some reactions I got uh, to my Fantasy Festival trilogy. So I even uh, made uh, three Mixcloud uh, sessions uh, with the music uh, mentioned in the videos, kind of corresponding uh, with the video idea. So I've put these links to the to the Mixcloud mixes uh, under the particular videos. If you should want to explore some of the bands that I have mentioned, but let's talk about some records. The first one, um, and uh, probably the oldest one in this little stack, uh, as far as uh, the production year goes, uh, is an album that I've already seen a few times on Vinyl Community. Um, and it's not surprising that it's in my possession with my uh, musical proclivities. Um, that's uh, the album by The Orient Express. Um, this is an uh, album from 1969. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty fascinating and pretty unique uh, record that was uh, recorded by three guys from, well, basically from Europe. And one of them is French, one of them uh, is... Um, from Belgium actually and one of them is from Iran and they met in Europe but they quickly moved to the United States and I think that's when where the album was recorded uh, I think in New York as far as I remember it correctly and um, it's a very interesting uh, very original recording and probably quite influential on um, many other artists that came later and that they kind of try to incorporate um, Middle Eastern music into jazz music, basically. And uh, this is a certainly nice uh, milestone uh, in this uh, particular musical direction, the Orient Express. This is a reissue, of course, that uh, came out on mainstream records, which also was the original label from 1969. So uh, quite a wonderful album and uh, uh, certainly something uh, that you can appreciate if you looking for sound that is slightly in the realm of psychedelic folk music and yet at the same time deeply in uh, Middle Eastern tunes and harmonies. The Orient Express. Um, now the next album is pretty amazing and uh, we're just moving one year to the future to 1970 and that, that's when Africa came out by Demon Fuzz and um, this is basically a psychedelic rock album but uh, very jazzy in parts and uh, certainly enriched by the background of the musicians um, this band was rather short-lived and created in London uh, in the late 60s and um, by, by African musicians. So um, what you also probably can hear here is a bit of a proto-Afrobeat music. Uh, but uh, the vibe is uh, very psychedelic and uh, it's a very lively and enthusiastic music. and. Uh, um, to some extent rather uplifting, um, which one would probably not tell from looking at the cover. Um, but uh, obviously this is a well-known record to fans of uh, late 60s, early 70s psychedelic rock or fans of Afrobeat in general. Now this album had appeared on so many labels that I really couldn't tell you which one of them is actually the original one. This is a Sanctuary BMG re-release uh, 
part of this music on vinyl program. I usually don't show that much labels. And uh, yeah, it's a quite a wonderful record. Yeah, a year later, 1971, saw the release of this debut album. Osibiza was a band that started basically in the same scene like Demon Fuzz and consisted of musicians mainly from Africa, from uh, Ghana, I think, and Nigeria. But also three musicians came from different parts of the Caribbean. And uh, this was their first record, self-titled. Um, this is a lovely reissue that I bought not that long ago. Um, nicely replicating the Roger Dean cover design. Even projecting it on the inner sleeves. Yeah, and obviously, obviously this is a well-known album. Great uh, example of early Afrobeat and uh, with a lot of psychedelic rock elements. I always felt that Osibiza belonged much more kind of into the musical mindset of bands like uh, Funkadelic and Parliament because uh, they were not afraid uh, to implement a lot of elements from uh, psych rock or even hard rock and um, that way they created their own quite amazing sound. Now uh, their second album was Voyaya Came, the, came out the same year, again 1971. This is again a reissue on a Repertoire Records. Um, again as a gatefold sleeve uh, with liner notes and uh, replicating the Roger Dean cover design. Yeah, and because I was on such a roll, I also listened to Ossibi Rock, which was kind of like fifth, fourth or fifth, maybe sixth album by Ossibiza. Came out in 1974. Uh, so this is a, uh, I don't know if it's an original pressing or something like that. It certainly came out on Warner Brothers. Uh, um, I find it less exciting compared with the first two albums, but it's still really a solid record. Uh, and certainly a nice listen. So uh, it seems like I'm becoming a kind of a go-to guy for Turkish music to some people and so uh, I wanted to show you this record here another beautiful release by Faraway Sounds. And this is a compilation with the music of Kamur and Akor which is a tur Turkish singer that uh, was quite famous in the early 70s um, this is a uh, music from uh, 1971 to basically 1975, covering those years when she recorded for Turkophon. And um, this was compiled and released by Faraway Sounds, which is a Spanish label that is uh, somewhat specializing in uh, Anatolian rock. And uh, I have already bought like four, maybe five of their records, and um, every time it's quite uh, an excellent purchase. Um, it comes with this uh, little inlay here that has uh, liner notes and uh, some little bit more historical stuff. And uh, yeah, it's great music. Um, it's um, Turkish pop um, with a certain psychedelic twist to it. Uh, a lot of uh, kind of fuzzy, fuzzy elements and most of the music comes from 7 inches basically and has been restored and a little bit remastered as far as it's possible but it sounds pretty good so uh, this is a, certainly a charming uh, slightly funky, slightly psychedelic pop sound from uh, the early 70s in Istanbul and uh, another nice uh, record in my collection from Faraway Sounds and now the final album for this session.
This is a record that was released in Germany in 2017 and is called Kimlik and the band is called Banda Internationale. This is a double album. Um, this came out on Tricont or Tricont Records, um, but it's more like a collaboration of multiple labels. Um, yeah, it's an interesting story behind it because uh, there was a, or there is a band called Banda Comunale, which uh, plays a lot of kind of a Balkan-oriented uh, uh, kind of multi-ethnic music, however you want to call it. And um, so they had this idea to create a band that uh, happened in the wake of the migration situation that was going on here in Germany after 2015-2016. So uh, there was a great uh, influx of migrants into the country and um, obviously these guys were thinking, yeah, there, there has to be a lot of excellent musicians among them. So let's create this uh, giant outfit uh, with a lot of people and uh, let's uh, just uh, record the hell out of it. And this is a kind of cool result because uh, you have uh, very eclectic music. I mean, you, you have the rather expected elements of sort of unza unza sound, uh, so the, sort of a balkanic, balkanic uh, Roma music elements in it, but uh, there are all kind of uh, really sort of virtuous Iranian musicians playing here. So uh, the, the the album is certainly not a kind of a mishmash or brew of, uh, of of directionless tracks or something like that. It's pretty pretty coherent and uh, really a good listen. This is obviously a zero bullshit band when it comes to the contemporary debates here in the country regarding migrations and foreigners in the country and um, they make no secrets uh, that they wholeheartedly oppose the AFD party here, that it's kind of become this uh, petri dish for all kind of uh, right-wingers and uh, ultra-libertarians or whatever that means. And uh, so um, this is a band from Dresden, which is again kind of interesting because uh, Dresden is particularly the, the city that has been accused uh, by many Germans uh, of being too far right as a whole city, which is a completely nonsensical approach because uh, I am quite experienced with Dresden and that's just uh, certainly not the whole story as a band like that proves every day. So uh, interesting record, even got uh, some governmental awards so uh, it's actually not something that happened in the shadows somewhere outside the public attention um, and it's an interesting sound it's very cheeky and uh, quite humorous in parts and uh, certainly a good listen if you are ready to commit yourself to an entirely eclectic record that has basically countless cultural sources. And that's it for today. So have a nice weekend and uh, let's spin some music and see you next time. Goodbye.